Hi everyone, it's Boomer again with another video where I try to explain the technical aspects of Minecraft in an easy to understand way. Today we'll be taking a look at strongholds and some of the tips and tricks to navigate them efficiently and find the portal room as quickly as possible. I won't be discussing how to locate the stronghold itself, but we'll begin by discussing where we should dig down once we have located the appropriate chunk. If you think this video provides valuable information, please consider leaving a like. If you want to see more content like this in the future, please click the subscribe button. It would really help me out. All right, let's get started. First, let's talk about the dig down. Once we have located the exact chunk identified by our eye of ender, we should dig down in a specific area. When you throw an eye of ender, it points to the chunk containing the stronghold starter staircase. In a bit, we'll take a look at what the starter staircase is and its importance in trying to locate the end portal. To identify the exact block where we should dig down, we'll want to reference the chunk coordinate section. The three numbers you see here are in the standard X, Y, Z format and refer to the block you're standing on within the current chunk you occupy. For this exercise, we are only concerned with X and Z and we'll be ignoring the Y value between the two. Chunks are defined by an area of 16 blocks by 16 blocks as defined by X and Z. The values for X and Z within a chunk section that show up here will vary between 0 and 15. As you can see here, the Eye of Ender has identified this chunk as the stronghold location, which technically means it has identified the chunk containing the stronghold's starter staircase. Knowing that, we can dig down in a specific location every time and find our starting point for stronghold navigation. Digging down at 4-4 within the chunk is typically the best option. Doing this will drop you directly into the center of the stronghold staircase. If you have a water bucket handy, you'll want to use it to save you from fall damage. Optionally, if you don't have a water bucket or aren't comfortable MLGing, you can dig down at 3-3. This will save you from the fall damage you may potentially incur by digging down at 4-4 and is a good option if you're low on food, health, or both. As I mentioned a moment ago, the starter staircase is our starting point for stronghold navigation. Regardless of how you enter the stronghold, you'll want to find your way to this staircase in order to use the strategy I'll be discussing. In this case, we reach the starter staircase by digging down. However, what happens if you come in from a different area, perhaps from an ocean-exposed portion of the stronghold, or miraculously stumbling across it? You'll still want to find the starter staircase, but how? I learned the concept I'm about to show you from a video I watched published by K4. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. When trying to locate the starter staircase having entered the stronghold from a location other than the dig down we did earlier, you'll want to pay close attention to the doors. If you've played much Minecraft, you know that doors have a flush side and a recess side depending on how they're placed. If you see a flush door that looks like this, traveling through it will lead you away from the starter staircase. If you see a recessed door such as this, heading through it will lead you towards the starter staircase. So, you'll always want to pass through doors from the recessed side, not the flush side. This is true regardless of whether it's a wood door or an iron door. Of course, many strongholds are scuffed, which may make it difficult to discern the right way to go, but with enough practice, you'll get the hang of it. Also, you can identify the starter staircase as the one that leads to nowhere, like this. Finally, the room adjacent to the starter staircase is always a five-way room like this. More on that in a bit. So now that we've located the starter staircase, how does that help us? Well, someone very smart discovered a correlation between the number of rooms away from the starter staircase and the probability of an end portal existing. I can't explain how Matthew Boland came up with this. However, in the countless strongholds I reviewed in preparation for this video, it seems to be spot on. In fact, many of the top speedrunners base their stronghold navigation on Boland's findings. I'll put a link to Boland's data in the description. Before we dive into this, we should first understand the structure of a stronghold. Many players, including myself, 
treated the stronghold like a maze. However, a more accurate description would be a tree. A tree has many branches and sub-branches that all connect in some way to its base. In our case, that base is the starter staircase. If we want to locate the portal room, we should travel down branches and sub-branches like shown here, always returning to the starter staircase. The reason for this is directly related to Boland's findings. What we are looking at here is a chart that visualizes the number of rooms away from the starter staircase related to the probability of finding the end portal at that distance. For example, if traveling down one of the branches and you are in the sixth room from the starter staircase, there's a 38.67% chance of that room being the portal room. Likewise, if you are in the ninth room, there's a 9.3% chance. As you can see, the likelihood of finding a portal room drops sharply the further you travel from the starter staircase. In fact, since these probabilities are additive, there's more than a 90% chance that the portal room will be located within 10 rooms of the starter staircase. It's also important to point out that this chart starts at 6, meaning Boland's findings indicate it is not possible for the portal room to be closer than 6 rooms from the starter staircase. So what's considered a room? While I wasn't able to find the specific definitions of what Boland considered a room, my research and experimentation indicate a room is what I'm showing here. That being said, even if your definition of a room is slightly different than mine, you can apply the same principle and determine your own turnaround point based on when you think you've traveled too far down a particular branch. With experience, you'll get this dialed in and be comfortable with your choices. I'm using signs to illustrate the concept. As I travel through the stronghold, you'll see the room number increase consistent with the distance away from the starter staircase. I'm counting rooms such as the initial five-way room, hallways, both large and small, including what I call chest hallways, staircases, four-way splits, prison areas, libraries, and other rooms that look like they should be considered a room. As I navigate down this particular branch, I split off into various sub-branches. Each time I get to the 11th or 12th room, I turn around and backtrack to the point where the sub-branch split off. I'll then look down each sub-branch until they've been explored. Once I've determined the probability of the current branch having a portal room is statistically low, I'll return to the starter staircase and explore the next branch and associated sub-branches. If you'd like to experiment with this concept yourself, I suggest you do what I did and use a creative world and teleport around to the various strongholds. Since reaching the stronghold in normal gameplay may be rare, you'll want to practice. As you can see here, the portal room is located seven rooms away from the starter staircase. This particular stronghold was relatively straightforward. I'd like to give you a few more tips that may help your game, including how to locate secret rooms. Secret rooms are relatively common in strongholds and may lead to the portal room so you'll want to know how to find them. They're hidden behind the walls of some of the five-way rooms, which is the type of room you enter from the starter staircase, like you see here, and can be identified by its potential to have up to five paths exiting the room. Five-way rooms can be found throughout the stronghold. In fact, the stronghold I'm using in this example had a total of three five-way rooms, two of which had multiple hidden rooms. The telltale sign that you'll find a hidden room lies in this 3x3 dead end section. A 3x3 section at the top of the stairs indicates a hidden room on the same wall at the bottom of the stairs. Conversely, a 3x3 dead end section located at the bottom of the stairs will indicate a hidden room up top. Notice, both side walls have a 3x3 dead end section. Therefore, we can assume there are two secret rooms, one on each wall. Here we see the dead end section located at the bottom of the five-way room stairs, indicating a secret room exists on the same wall at the top of the stairs. Again, like the previous example, this room has two secret rooms. However, one is located at the top of the stairs and the other is located at the bottom. Of course, in this case, the buttons are a dead giveaway that an iron door is hidden behind the blocks, but that's not the case for wooden doors and standard doorless passageways. Before I wrap things up, I have a few more tips to share. First, as most of us have seen at one point or another, many strongholds are scuffed, 
due to other things such as mine shafts, ravines, and lava pools generating in the same area. This can lead to confusion and cause you to jump from one branch to another without knowing it. Obviously, this isn't ideal if you're trying to conduct a systematic search for the portal room. I've found it's helpful to visualize how the path should have generated had the other generation not occurred in the same area. I'll use stained glass to illustrate my point. A mine shaft generated in the same area as the stronghold. Had that not occurred, the path to the library would have been filled in as shown here. This example is fairly basic and easy to visualize, but that won't be the case all the time. You'll need to get good at this to navigate scuffed strongholds effectively. My next tip may seem obvious, however, as you navigate the stronghold while trying to keep count of the rooms, avoid mobs, and all the other things going through your head, we can often forget to take a look at the subtitles in the bottom right corner. If we start to see silverfish noises, we're most likely close to the portal room. Make sure you have subtitles enabled and you do your best to pay attention to them. My last tip may help you decide whether or not you should turn around as you travel further from the starter staircase. If you have reached, say, the 10th room and see very little light from the hallways and doors ahead of you, it's likely the portal room is located elsewhere. Generally speaking, the portal room will give off a significant amount of light, allowing you to take a closer look at well-lit areas. Hopefully I was able to help you better understand how to navigate strongholds effectively. I'm interested in hearing your thoughts, so if you don't mind leaving me a comment, that would be great. If you think this video deserves it, please consider leaving a like. If you want to see more content like this in the future, please click the subscribe button. Well, that's all folks. Thanks for watching. Until next time, bye.